Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, true name Yahweh. In the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides us, especially during this time to come. Today we celebrate in the, the Day of Atonement, which is basically atonement for our sins. We afflict ourselves, basically go 24 hours without eating or drinking. And it's likened unto a Sabbath. Like I said, that's for the, you know, for our atonement for our sins. But ultimately we know that Yahweh Shai was atonement for our sins when he died on the cross for the sins of the nation of Israel, the Lord's people, which today consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father's sea line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. Yahweh Shai was crucified for our sins, not the heathen, but like I said, but with that in mind, we got to understand that we must do, we, we must use what we receive from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Especially in this truth, we got to exalt Yahweh Bashim Yahweh as much as we can and do this work. And like I said, use the, the times that we receive, especially us doing this work that the Lord put the spirit on to do so. As far as, you know, helping out the brotherhood, feeding the flock, etc. That includes the woman as well, as far as in doing what's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh As in being obedient to your husband, listening to and learning in silence, helping out the men of the Lord to the best of your ability. But like I said, the whole point of this lesson is you got to use what you get. You can't just sit on your talent. So, the first scripture I'm going to start off with is Matthew chapter 25 and verse 24. It reads, When I'm going to start at, um, Fourteen. It reads, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto him them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he increased. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. So this person received ta the talent, basically this knowledge, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the Lord or whatever the Lord has given him. And he went and hid it. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And, and, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that's what we pray that Yahweh Bashim al Shah says to us that's doing this work. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering there where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. So he hid his talent in the earth. Basically, he he had a measure of talent that the Lord has given him to like 
like I said, some of us, we preach this word, help out the ministry to the best of our ability, etc. Feed in the flock. But he, he hid his. He kept it to himself. And the Lord wasn't pleased with that. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I soweth not, so not, and gather where I have not straw. And like he said, thou wicked and slothful servant. That's like it states in Revelation. Let me get it real quick. Revelation 3. And that's why Apostle Taha has stated that we are action camp. You can't be no, like Apostle, I believe he said Apostle Kabbalah was pissed because he was like, we aren't, we're not wallflowers. But Revelation 3 and verse 15, Yahweh Shai says, I know thy works, thou art neither cold nor hot. I will thou work cold or hot. So then because thou art like lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So we can't be lukewarm in this, in this um, work. We can't be slothful. But I'm going to continue on in Matthew chapter 25, verse 27. It reads, Thou oughtest therefore have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. So that's why we pray that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh keep the spirit on us, because the Lord can take that spirit away from you and put it on to another person. And that person can use that talent better than you've used it. And that's what you don't want. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he have. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So that's why we got to, you know, stay faithful and on fire for this work. Because we don't want to be, you know, cast in the outer darkness. Like I said, the point of this lesson, you got to use what you got. You can't just sit on, on your talent. I'm going to go from there to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'm going to start at verse 6. It reads... But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his, he proposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And the best way to give is to give people this knowledge. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread of your for your food. So everything is of your house by Shah. And multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving of to Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. Because, you know, when you feed the flock and they receive, you know, the benefits of what you give them, they give thanks to Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. Because, like I said, it's like a a recycled thing. Everything is of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. So when you do what's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, as in helping out, helping out, you know, especially the the people of the Lord that's pleasing in the sight, and you will, the the Lord will ultimately increase you. I'm going to jump back to Matthew chapter 25 and verse, I'm going to start at verse 35. This year, how was I speaking? Because like I said, ultimately when you, when you do this work and, and, and use what you get as far as in your talent, you're helping out your how about Shemiah 
it reads, For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we the sick, thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, say unto them, Verily, which verily means truthfully, I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto me, to, to one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me then shall he say also unto them one on the left hand depart from me ye curse unto everlasting fire and prepare for the devils and his angels for i was in hunger and ye gave me no meat i was thirsty and ye gave me no drink i was a stranger and ye took me not in naked and ye clothed me not sick and in prison and ye visit me not then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry and or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and I did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into, into, into life eternal. So like I said, the things that we do for the body, is ultimately for Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. So you gotta use what you get. You can't just hide it under a napkin because that's not gonna be pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. You'll be considered as a faithful and slothful servant. But I'm going to go from there to Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 7. It reads, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach Yahweh So yeah, everyone receives, like, like the scripture said about the time, that everyone receives a certain measure. You got to exalt your measure that you receive to the best of your ability. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up upon on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach Shai, till we all come in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the son of Yahweh Shai, the, the, the son of Yahweh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. You see, so as of right now, we got to use the grace according to the measure of the gift of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. So some brothers may have a more measure of faith than others, but ultimately it's one body. That's why we must all speak the same thing. But ultimately the point has been made. Like I said, you you gotta use what you get as far as in how much whatever talent you receive, you use it. To the best of your ability you can't just keep it to yourself and think Yahweh Shai is going to be pleased when the heavenly father Yahweh allows him to return to destroy this wicked kingdom which is ruled by Satan the man that's doing the bidding of Satan Job 9 and 24 the earth was given into the hands of the wicked the so-called white man whose forefathers Esau Edom this is his kingdom so you got to continue to do this work, no matter how these devils come down with great wrath, because eventually they're going to come down with great wrath. And you want Yahweh Shah to be pleased when you return, when he returns and see that you've used the measure that he's given you. And it wasn't a, a slothful servant and did and just kept it to yourself. But... I'm going to finish off with the second Peter chapter 1 
uh, verse 10, it reads, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. It says give diligence. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. And because ultimately the fact that we're the hopeful elect, we don't know who's the chosen until that time come. But it's best that you give diligence and use the talents that you receive to the best of your ability. Because more than likely, if the Lord put the spirit on you to do this work and be diligent and use your talent, you, you, you're probably a part of the elect. But like I said, I'm not the one to say it, we're the hopeful elect. Just like I'm hoping... I'm pretty sure all the brothers that's doing this work, like me, are hoping that they're part of the elect because we ultimately we don't want to be, you know, destroyed. But we understand that the ones that, that does have to, you know, be modest for the truth. But if you die for the name, in the name of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, doing the work in truth and sincerity, you're still, you're going to be raised up and you're going to still receive a crown. And that's what we're all fighting for, to receive a crown. But that's all I got. Call Haloim La Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shah Ba Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honest to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.